You pressed record, right? I sure Tech did. guy? Oh, goody. Okay. Um, now, just before we get started, <clears throat> I should have said last night, we're going to use a wall uh, f just for two postures later on. These are, you know, things to show you that you can do anytime. So it's not just about yoga because sometimes we're not going to roll our mat out. We just want to release some tension from our shoulders. And of course, with the neck being the neighbor of the shoulder, we're going to release tension from the neck today as well. Um, so uh, to begin with, though, if you're comfortable sitting cross-legged in Sukhasana, uh, I want to do some work sitting. If you're not comfortable sitting cross-legged, aka Sukhasana, then a chair with a firm seat and a straight back is all you need to perform the beginning of this uh, these exercises. Um, now, people who know me well know that I often talk about the emotional or psychological causes behind tension, stress, dis-ease, a lack of ease in the body. <clears throat> so shoulders in general will reflect our feelings and thoughts about what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, as well as our attitudes about how we are being related to given our responsibilities. And I know most women and men, but I know that I'm speaking to more women and I do feel that sometimes women take on a lot more um, than men will <clears throat> in terms of a range of activities. I mean, we'll do everything. I was power washing the decks at my cabin this weekend by myself. If you've ever lifted a power washer, carried it up and down umpteen stairs, you have some idea of the work. Uh, it's, but anyway, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> you know, I made dinner for, for a couple of gals on Saturday night after power washing for five hours. So it's just what we do. But um, shoulder tension can also manifest due to um, desires restrained. So not articulating or going after our desires. Um, frustration in what we need. Um, not knowing how to get or ask for support. That's a big one. Um, and basically, shoulder tension sometimes is just that sign that says, you know what, it's time to take a break and go have some fun or just let go of whatever it is that's possibly stressing your shoulders out. So that's just a mini story about these shoulders. Okay, so I assume by now we are all comfortably seated in uh, Sukhasana or on a chair. And the first thing we're going to do is sit up nice and tall, relax your shoulders, <clears throat> and then on an inhale, reach up through the crown. And on an exhale, I want you to lower your chin and press your chest out. Now, when you press your chest towards your chin, you can feel your shoulders going back. We're not going to stay in this position, but I just want you to remember when I tell you, give you that command to lift your sternum. Well, right now we're pushing the chest into the chin. We're stretching out the back of the neck and relaxing the shoulders. But you'll notice how the shoulders go back. Okay, so we're going to draw some circles now with our nose. You can start in the clockwise direction, and I'll do the mirror. So inhale. You're drawing a big circle with the nose. You're isolating your neck and your head. You're not moving your shoulders or your torso. Nose comes up to midnight. And on an exhale, begin the descent down to the other side drawing the circle with your nose. Now you're gonna feel different muscles working here in your neck, particularly your trapezius. So you're down at the bottom, you're gonna inhale. Let's do this one more time in the clockwise position, slowly inhaling to midnight. You shouldn't be there just yet. If you are, wait for us and then exhale. 
draw a big circle with your nose and drop your chin to your chest and press your chest towards your chin and let's reverse the direction inhaling slowly to the quarter hour and up to midnight and then exhale on your descent making the circle drawing it with the tip of your nose i know your eyes are probably closed so that's why I'm, you're down at the bottom now at six o'clock one more time inhale draw that circle with your nose slowly you may be noticing some release in this area now so that by now you're at midnight and you're exhaling and completing the circle back down to chin to chest great now inhale again i'll do the mirror you're going to tilt your head to the left you're going to bring your left hand up to the side the right side of your head you're going to extend your right arm out to the side and you're just gently pulling or pushing the head so stretching the side of the neck and then reach that right arm out you may feel this in the arm muscles itself in the shoulder just breathe breathe through it breathe into it infuse it with oxygen and caring awareness and then tippy toe the fingers of the right hand back releasing the left arm down inhale to reach up with the crown of your head exhale tilt your right ear to your right shoulder bring your right arm and hand up and place it on the left side of your head and then tippy toe the fingers of the left hand out to the side and again it's just gentle releasing of the side cervical vertebra stretching through the shoulder one more inhale and exhale and on an inhale releasing the arms coming back to center now again i'm doing the mirror image for you you're going to take your right arm across your body you're going to lock it with the left arm at the elbow we've done this and breathe so now we're stretching the upper part we're warming up the muscles of the shoulder area wow can i ever feel this so I'll just grin or grit my teeth. <laughs> oh yeah. I think I spent, oh, I would say close to about 17 hours of doing this spring. I even did it in the rain. I was so desperate to get it done. The reason being, as you know, wooden decks with uh, tree leaves and uh, cedar become like skating rinks when they're wet with all that detritus so I was trying to clean that off okay so breathe in if you're feeling this in that shoulder just breathe in keep a little bit of tension not too much practicing with awareness respect and compassion okay unlock that arm take it over behind your head and the fingertips are going to be between the shoulder blades and with your other hand you're pushing the elbow down and you can feel that stretch through the tricep mobilizing warming up this shoulder joint you know the shoulders are a very complex and diverse number of muscles and it is one of the least stable joints as opposed to the hips which have the bigger muscles um, but it's a very stable joint. So that's why we need to stretch it a little more. This one's more mobile and um, can be prone to injury. So the stretching that we're going to do today, the strengthening is all proactive work. Oh boy, am I ever feeling this, which is great. 
My muscles are talking to me saying, wow. Well, they're saying something. <laughs> okay, and then, oh gosh, release. Ah, and just shimmy your shoulders. Ah, and give your head a shake. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's take the other arm. Opposite arm. Again, you're locking at the elbow. So it's kind of like a straight door, barn door, opening it and locking with the other arm at the shoulder and just feel the muscles. I mean, we're gonna work a lot of muscles today around the shoulder joint, but this also involves the upper back and the neck. As my yoga teacher used to always say, all of our stress starts between our ears. And <clears throat> it's good to tell the truth and get stuff off your chest. But I guess if we're finding ourselves complaining about the same things over and over again, I find myself saying the same things over and over again. That's just a reminder. It's my life talking to me. And um, I need to do something about it because complaining doesn't change anything except our stress levels, overworking our adrenals. I'm going to be talking about the importance of water today. So important. Okay. Wow. All right. Unlock. Wow. <laughs> I had this idea for class before I did all the work, um, but maybe I was just being prescient. Okay, so you're taking that hand now in between the shoulder blades, around the back, and pushing down. So you're getting this incredible stretch to your tricep muscles, whoops. One of our lights just cacked out. Ah. Ah, breathe into it. Oh boy. Okay. And let's release. Yes. And let's just bring the shoulders up to the ears, roll them back. We're gonna stay on the floor for a bit here. <sighs> and again, shimmy it out. So that's interesting, the lights went out. Well, we'll see if tech guy can fix that up. And if not, just listen to my voice because a lot of it you can't see me when you're actually doing it. I do Zoom yoga classes, so I really get how hard it is sometimes to be watching and doing. So that's why I talk as much as I do. Actually, I want you to come on to your side, on right onto your back. We're going to do a supine crescent move. We're just gonna stretch out the whole body here. So, lying in the center of your mat with your legs together, I want you to take your legs, both of them over to the right. Okay, they're together and they're over to the right. Now inhale the arms up over your head. Your right hand grabs your left wrist and you're going to stretch into a crescent moon or sometimes we call this a banana. And if holding on to your left wrist is in some way uncomfortable, just release, maybe grab your fingers because this is an intense stretch for the left side of your body. So you're making yourself into a crescent moon. Again, you're feeling an incredible stretch here through the armpit and into some of the posterior uh, muscles of the spine, of the, uh, pardon me, the shoulder joint, the tendons, the ligaments, these things all need to be stretched. Okay, and come back to center. And now take both legs over to the left and I'm gonna knock my water bottle over. And then bring both arms over to the left as well. And again, if you wish, you can grab with your left hand the right wrist 
and do a little bit of pulling or grab your fingers, your peace fingers, and just turn your body into a bit of a banana shape or crescent moon and breathe. Good deep inhaling and exhaling. We hold the pose, but we don't hold our breath. Excellent. And come back to center. Lift your arms up to the ceiling now. So you're flat on the floor, flat on the floor. Your shoulder blades are on the mat. Your legs are together. You're nice and straight. Arms are straight up from your shoulders. Your fingertips are pointing towards the ceiling. I want you to lift just your right arm up. Reach up towards the ceiling. Reach and stretch. Lift. Reach. Exhale. Come on back down with the right arm and shoulder. So we're isolating now the left arm, the left shoulder, reaching up, stretching up. You're stretching the muscles over the shoulder blade. Reaching, stretching, exhale, back down, yes. How about both arms now, reaching and stretching, lifting as much as you can. Shoulder blades are off the floor. Ah, exhale, release, and lower your arms back down onto the mat. Bend your legs, place the soles of your feet where your knees were. We're gonna do a little more warm up here on the arms on our back, and then we're gonna come up onto our knees. So line up your heels with your sits bones. This is bridge pose, but we're gonna add our arms to our bridge pose today. Press the small of your back into the floor, peel your spine off the floor, lifting up, activating your thighs and your hip flexors, compressing at the throat, and then lift your arms up, both of them up towards midnight, and exhale them over behind your head reaching and stretching inhale the arms up you're holding bridge pose and slowly lower the arms as you lower your torso come on all the way down palms are facing the floor <sighs> exhale on an inhale Press the small of your back into the floor, peel your spine off the floor, lift your hips up, activate your thighs, stretch your hip flexors, compress your throat area, inhaling again, lifting the arms up, fingertips pointing to ceiling, exhale, lower the arms over behind your head, holding here, lift up a little bit more if you can, and then exhale as you bring the arms up to midnight and continue the exhale as you lower everything back down onto the mat, including your arms. And then let's draw the knees up in towards the chest and just do some gentle rocking from side to side. Or you can make circles on your back while you're holding on to your knees. We're going to go into puppy pose. We're going to thread the needle, do a couple of cat dogs and move into sun salutations, and then we'll come to standing. So place your hands underneath the backs of your thighs and rock up to a seated posture. By the way, if that rocking up to the seated posture doesn't work for you guys after I've already told you to do it about a thousand times by now, you can always roll over onto your side and press yourself up. But I love it for the uh, work on the uh, spine. It just kind of enlivens the spine. Okay, so melting heart or puppy pose. So instead of child's pose, we're gonna keep our knees underneath our hips, but we're gonna reach in front with the arms now, I've seen this with the chin down. I don't like it. It's too much of a crank for the neck. So I'm going to suggest you put your forehead on the floor. To me, this is safer. If you feel that you need to press your hips back a bit because there's too much pressure on your forehead, then bring your butt a little bit back, but please stretch those arms out. So this is stretching the upper back, 
the neck, and of course, the shoulders. This class is all about the shoulders. Breathe into it. This is a pretty intense stretch. It's also called melting heart pose. Puppy or melting heart. Stretching. Breathing, which is two parts. Inhaling and exhaling. Lovely. Press yourselves back up. And let's take a moment here to come into our uh, tabletop position. So your hands are underneath your um, shoulders. Your knees are underneath your hips. Remember, if this is too much pressure uh, for the wrist, you can come up onto your knuckles or you can move your hands slightly forward. But if possible, have your wrists directly under your elbows, which are directly under your shoulders. And let's go for our cat cow. On an exhale, round your spine. Tuck your chin, drop your tail. So again, stretching those shoulders out. That's our focus today. Inhaling, hollow out your lower back, lift your tail, lengthen through your neck. And exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin, pull your bellies in. Inhale, hollow out your lower back, lift your tail, lengthen through the neck. And one more time, exhale. Tucking the chin, pull the navel up towards the spine. You're coming into cat. And now we're moving into cow. Moo. The body is designed to move. And in yoga, if we're not focusing on what we're doing, then we're just doing a few calisthenics and stretches. There's no yoga without concentration. So think about what you're doing. Inhale the right arm up, reach up, stretch up. Wow. And let's thread the needle. Bringing the right arm under the left, bringing the right shoulder onto the mat and the right side of the face, and then tippy-toe the right arm out, or pardon me, the left arm out in front, because your right one is threading the needle. If you're on the opposite side, no worries, we're going to do both sides. And just breathe here, again, still warming up this shoulder area for safe practice increasing the mobility and range of movement. So we're, that's what this class is about today. Getting more mobility in the shoulder, checking in with it, of course, and then draw that left hand back and press yourself up. Place your hands back underneath your shoulders. Inhale, sweep the left arm up and exhale, bring it under and then lower your left shoulder left side of your face to the floor and tippy toe the fingers out to the other side. Now, I know that there are people out there getting shoulder surgery because they just have such pain in their shoulders. And I've mentioned this before. My sister <clears throat> is very active in sports, um, racket sports and well, kayaking, all kinds of things. So she likes to be active. She had shoulder surgery. It was an enormous success. So I'm just saying um, it's not a walk in the park, but if you are putting up with or have had a lot of shoulder pain for a long time, um, she had it done in St. Catharines where she lives um, or in that area. So I can't recommend the surgeon, but uh, she is doing everything she's always done and without pain. And she's just a year and a half younger than me, making her a senior citizen too. Okay, draw that arm uh, back towards you. And let's see here. Next up, we are going to curl the toes under. Roll back onto the soles of your feet. I'll come into the center here. 
Tech guy got the light fixed, way to go. And then keep your knees nice and soft, let your head hang. So again, sometimes just hanging upside down is a great relief for the shoulders. Um, you're getting more blood supply into the body when you invert. So we're talking about the shoulders, the neck area, you're probably feeling release. And then rooting and grounding yourself through the soles of the feet, let's slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, keep your chin tucked into your chest, let your arms hang, and let your head be the last thing to come up. Ah, okay, how's everybody doing? Wow, I feel better. Okay, so let's come up to the front of the mat. We're going to work the entire body by doing our sun salutations. These are very important, um, and they work everything. Okay, Let's inhale in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up and arc back. And then inhale, stretch up, lift out of your waist, fold from the tops of your legs. Bring your fingertips to the floor. If need be, bend your knees. Otherwise you're getting a nice stretch in the backs of your legs, we hope. Step your right leg back, drop your knee to the mat. Keep your shoulders right over your hips. If you want to, you're gonna take your back knee off the floor, focus your gaze, cause it's a balanced posture. Inhale and sweep the arms up. Keep your shoulders down, fingers are active. Press through that back heel, that's your anchor. Press into it, you're on the ball of the foot, on that right foot. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart, and come on into your push-up or plank position. Now, clearly, this is the strengthening aspect for the shoulders as well as your core. We've warmed them up. We're going to do some more mobility. But downward dog, plank. So again, you're holding the position, not holding your breath breathe in fact notice if this might even feel a little bit better because of all the warm-ups we did for the shoulders today release your knees to the floor flatten the tops of your feet take your buttocks way back way 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 back and again nice stretch here for the shoulders the muscles in the arms the armpits the upper back and then leave your hands exactly where they are and then keep your torso nice and low you might want to lower your uh, elbows and forearms to the floor come very slowly forward i know this is difficult for some people but eventually i'm hoping you can get your chin and your chest on the floor with your bums up in the air <clears throat> Great, push everything out behind you. So you're flat on the floor now, your fingertips are lining up with the edges of your shoulders, your forehead is on the mat. Please press your shoulders away from your ears. Bring your elbows into your side body and press your forearms onto the mat. This sets your shoulders and your shoulder blades in the optimal position here. And then press your hips and pelvis into the floor as well. Your tops of your feet are flat on the mat and your toes are pointing backwards. Roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen your neck. On an inhale, without using the hands, lift your head, neck, shoulders, and chest off the floor. Coming up as high as you can. Strengthening here the lower back and breathe. This also has a nice um, cleansing effect on the adrenals, our stress glands, our kidneys. Boy, do our kidneys need a lot of water. And when our kidneys don't get enough water, there's extra work on the liver. So I can't wait to talk to you about the importance of water at the end of the class, but I will inject a few ideas along the way because there's a lot to grasp. If you just drink water, you can just trust me, you need it. Okay, on an exhale, lengthen as you lower. Curl your toes under, 
Lift your hips up. Walk your feet slightly forward. Bend your knees. Press your belly to your thighs. Press your chest to your knees. And lengthen your arms and your torso by pressing your sits bones towards the back wall. Your knees are still bent. Another shoulder strengthener, no doubt about it. And now press your heels towards the floor. And remember what we talked about last week? 70% of the movement of your lungs, the filling of your lungs will be felt in the back and side rib cage. So notice this as you're breathing, pressing all 10 fingers into the mat, aligning your ears with your inner arms. This is an energizing posture, it must feel good. You're stretching out the backs of your legs. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. Look at your right hand. Swing that foot as far forward as possible. Other leg forward. Let your head hang. Bring your arms beside your ears. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Pull your belly in to protect your lower back. Inhale, sweep the arms in front. Reach up, stretch up, look up. Feet apart for balance, arc back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. And then bend your knees and sweep the arms out to the side, up and overhead, hands in prayer. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. Oh. Wow, this is so good. I'm so sorry that I have your mat tech guy that you can't do this. <laughs> I think he's happy. Okay, all right, let's do one more round. Really stretching everything out, getting the circulation into all of the tendons, ligaments, muscles, joints, glands, arteries, nerves, and veins. That is what sun salutations do other than paying homage to the sun, of course. So let's inhale in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up and arc back. And then inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist, hinge from the tops of your legs, your hips, reaching forward as you fold, fingertips to the floor, let your head hang, give it a swing, step your left leg back, drop the knee to the mat, bring your hips, shoulders right over your hips, hand on your front thigh, you can stay here if you like, or lift that back knee off the floor, press into that back left heel, inhale, sweep the arms up, fingers alive, Ah, keep pressing into that back heel. If you want, straighten the back leg, keep the front knee bent, turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart. One more time, let's take our best plank or push up position here. Remember, if this is too much for your wrists, you bring your knees to the floor and then lift your ankles and cross them. You'll still get some work into the shoulders. In fact, you can think calisthenic when you focus on a muscle group and you tense them up. Of course, if you're holding in plank here, you're not holding your breath. You are strengthening upper body, shoulders, arms. Engage your core. Reaching through the crown of your head. Lovely. Release your knees. Flatten the tops of your feet so your toes are pointing backwards. Take your buttocks back towards your heels, stretching out the shoulders. How beautiful is this? After working the shoulders, you stretch them. I've taught a few shoulder classes, but I feel that this one is really one of the best ones that I've ever created for the shoulders. But of course, like you, I always want to continue to learn and improve. So release your elbows and forearms onto the floor. Slowly come forward. Slowly. And then can you release your chest and your chin somewhere between your hands with your bum up in the air? I know this is awkward.
slide everything out behind you. Okay, now it's time for our cobra. We always have the choice of baby or the full expression. But we all start in the same place. Your toes are pointing backward. The tops of your feet are flat on the mat. Your fingertips are aligned with the edges of your shoulders. Your forehead is on the mat. You're going to press your hips and your pelvis into the mat. Your elbows come into your rib cage, your side body, and then press your elbows and forearms to the floor. Notice how this moves your shoulders and shoulder blades away from your ears and down your back. Roll an invisible alley with your nose until your neck is lengthened and you're looking straight down at your mat. On an inhale, everybody's lifting the head, the neck, the chest, the shoulders, and then you can stay here in baby or continue to press the floor away from you. Don't let the elbows wing out. Keep your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders in alignment. This has a great effect on the alignment of the spine. Breathing, eyes looking upwards towards your third eye, Ajna Chakra. One more inhale, exhale, lengthen as you lower, bringing your forehead onto the mat. Keep your hands where they are. Keep your fingers spread wide apart. Curl your toes under. Come on up onto your knees. Lift your hips up. Walk your feet a few inches forward. Bend your knees. Press your belly onto your thighs, your chest towards your knees, your ears are in between your arms and your 10 fingers are all pressing into the mat. Now, take your sit bones towards the back wall. Take them towards the back of your mat and then press your heels towards the floor and feel that beautiful stretch in the backs of your knees, your calves and your Achilles tendons. If you're a racket sports player, you must keep those Achilles tendons nice and stretched because that is a tough injury. You cannot repair those. You just have to sit it out and wait. Breathing. And then lift the left leg up in the air. Look at your left hand. Swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward. Please let your heads hang. Just relax your shoulders here. And then pressing the soles of your feet into the floor, bring your arms beside your ears, engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps, pull your bellies in to protect your lower back, sweep the arms in front, reaching up, stretching up, looking up and arcing back. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, forward fold, let your heads hang, bend your knees, sweep the arms out to the side, reach up and overhead, bring your hands into prayer, and ending with Anjali Mudra. Okay, let's keep going here. Trying different yoga clothes. I don't know where to buy them anymore. I'm not big on, well, I shouldn't say what I'm not big on, but... It's that, it's that really big brand in Canada, which I don't think they make them for me exactly. Okay, just want to make sure that we go into our next um, movement. Okay, uh, I hope you have a spot that you can use uh, a wall. Now, I put another mat here. If you've got a rug, you'll be fine. But there's a couple of things that I want to show you. And I mentioned them at the beginning of the class that <clears throat> sometimes you don't want to roll out your yoga mat, but you've been sitting in front of your computer hammering out some document or letter or something, and you just need a break. And this is a great one, okay? So standing up, we're doing, it's called downward dog at the wall. So this is a really nice, safe stretch where your hips are over your heels and you're just reaching to the wall. So this increases the mobility, but it's a safe way of increasing mobility for when we need to reach up. So that upwards mobility. 
So if you don't feel like you're getting enough stretch, just walk your feet back, hands against the wall. I hope you can find one. I know it can be difficult with pictures and furniture, etc. So really, again, press your sits bones backwards. That will give you more stretch through the arms, through the shoulders, through the upper back. Great. Walk your feet a little bit forward. Ah. And give your arms a little bit of a shake out. I do have a, a video too about how to use a door frame um, on my website. I'm not sure what we called it, but you can find it and look for it. But a door frame is really good. So imagine if this is the door, you put your arm hand on the back of the door and then you can move forward with one of your uh, legs. Okay, but this is the one, the other one we're gonna do now, this is called practicing the piano. Not, but that's what it's sort of like. So <clears throat> if your right side is closest to the wall, whatever leg is closest to the wall, leave it where it is. Take the outside leg back and you can stay on the ball of that back foot and bend your front leg. And then if your right leg is next to the wall, it'll be your right arm that you're reaching forward on the wall. And this is the piano part that we're, that we're saying, is that you're reaching forward and then like playing the piano, you're going to bring your fingers down the keyboard to the back. Now, the tendency here is for the torso to turn towards the wall. We want to keep it to the front of the mat. So, so now you've gone the entire keyboard or not. This is an intense stretch. So be careful. Breathe into it. Ah, <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. In fact, if this is too intense, you could go to your door frame. And in a moment, I'll tell you about the door frame again, how to make this less intense in case you have shoulder issues. Okay. And then release the arm and come forward. So if you are using a door frame, the least intense is when the elbow is a bit higher and it gets more intense as you lower the elbow on the door frame. So I like to start it with it being perpendicular. So it's on the outside of the door frame, but you can also raise it higher or lower. You just try that. So pardon my back here, but we'll do the other side. So I'm going to be on the left side now. My left leg and left arm closest to the wall. I'm going to step the right leg back. You can stay on the ball of that foot. And then I'm going to reach forward and gently tickle the ivories all the way back, keeping my torso to the front of the mat and breathe. So maybe you notice a difference. I'm not as um, stiff or tight on my left side, but that would be because I did my power washing mostly with my right arm, right hand, because I'm right-handed for that sort of thing. Ah. But this gives you a great stretch, again, through the pectoralis muscles. So we have a major and minor pectoralis muscles. These are our chest muscles. And let's release and then give it a good shake out. So because we're spending so much time in our forward flexion, these muscles get shortened. And, and, the, and the reality is, now I know the tech guy went upstairs. I hope he's going to come back soon. There he is, because you're going to have to move the camera. Um, is that all of these muscles, when they are in a contracted state, uh, eventually, you can't even stretch them out. And this is why we do see a lot of older people that are really collapsed and they find it difficult to actually ever straighten out. But it doesn't have to be that way because we also see lots of seniors who have beautiful posture 
and uh, really pay attention to that. So we're going to do another shoulder uh, strengthener and then we're going to do some more um, mobility and release stretching of this shoulder joint. So the next one now is called dolphin pose. And we've done it before. We're not reinventing the wheel. I'm just choosing a focus every week. So in dolphin pose, we come down onto our forearms. We want our elbows underneath our shoulders, and then we're gonna interlock our fingers. Now, the baby finger in the bottom hand, tuck that in to your hand, so, because here it is here, it's underneath, and it's gonna get crushed. So, because if we rest, you know, this is one of the actually strongest bones in our bodies. This is the one you break the stick with. Uh, I did that once. <laughs> now I don't need to do it again. <laughs> I, I took a class in self-defense. Okay, alrighty. So, elbows underneath the shoulders, interlock your fingers, tuck that baby finger in. You're gonna curl your toes under. You're gonna lift your hips up, but your head will not touch the floor, but let the head hang. So dolphin pose, you can feel. And again, pressing your sits bones back, you can feel the effort here in the shoulders and the arms. Give your head a shake. Don't hold any tension in that neck area. Great. Come on all the way down. And let's just take a moment here in child's pose. Bring the arms around the side of your body. Lower your torso on your chest. And I'm hoping you can lower your forehead to the floor. And if not, find a block. Your Zafu, your meditation cushion, or any type of cushion or pillow, and place that underneath your forehead. And breathe. Child's pose stretches the back, relaxes the shoulders, the compression on the abdominal organs is unparalleled for squeezing out, assisting the body to release toxins, wastes, and impurities. This is so important. I mean, the body does all these things, but given some of the foods we have access to these days and the toxins that are in the water, the air, pesticides, GMO, it goes on and on and on. Any help the body can get is appreciated. Alrighty, bring your hands forward and let's press back. Curl the toes under. Lift your hips up, walk your hands back towards your feet. And again, rooting and grounding through the soles of your feet. Let your head hang and slowly roll up. Keeping your chin tucked into your chest and your head is the last thing to come up. Okay, so for mobility in the shoulders, Garudasana, Eagle Pose. And of course, mobility in all of your joints. Again, an unparalleled posture, but it is a balanced posture, so we need to take our time. And remember, in uh, Garudasana, the more you can tuck, and you know, we've been doing our um, tree pose, Utkatasana, a lot, but this is the same deal. You need to tuck a lot, you need to bend your knees a lot. Uh, and just a reminder, guys. When you're, when you're brushing your teeth, I mean, prove it to yourself. As I mentioned, I have a very low sink in my new place. And if I brush my teeth like this, that does not honor the integrity of my back whatsoever. And it starts to not feel good. So I do brush my teeth in the Utkatasana so that I can honor this lower lumbar area. Alrighty, so if you're doing anything, in fact, Please be aware of your posture, no matter what you're doing. I was even being aware of my posture doing the power spraying on the weekend because, well, when you're just doing this all the time, you got to think about something. Okay. All right. So 
bend your legs a lot. I'll do the, I'll try and do the mirror image for you. It might get confusing though. You know what? I'm not going to do the mirror image. Just listen because I don't want this to be confusing. So bring your arms out to the side, shoulder height with your knees bent. You're going to sweep the arms around the body with your right arm under your left, right arm under your left. And you're going to attempt to grab hold of your shoulder blades. Do the best you can here. Keep your knees really, really bent here. And then release. So obviously, this is a beautiful stretch for the muscles are between the shoulder blades. If you ever get that kind of tension between the, the shoulder blades, actually, I'll get back to that in a minute and tell you about it. But release your hands. You're going to try and bring your palms together. But if that doesn't work, just bring the outside of your fingers together. Do what you can here. All right. Now, because your right arm is under your left, it'll be your right leg over your left. So it's the opposite. Whatever arm is under means the leg will, the, uh, the right leg will be on top. Okay. So now, Come up onto the ball of your right foot because you're going to be balancing on your left foot. Bend your knees a lot. Wait for your own inner cue when you're doing any kind of a balance posture. Okay, and breathe. So I'm going to lift my right leg up. I'm going to bring it on top of the left and I'm going to try and wrap my toes around the ankle or my calf, which I'm not there yet. Doesn't matter. Focus, breathe. And let's release. Bring the arms up and overhead. Sweep them down to the side, and this time bring your left arm under your right. Grab those shoulder blades, giving yourself a nice big hug. Bend your knees. Sit back with your buttocks. Release the arms. Okay. So I can definitely feel what I did on the weekend here, and I don't think I'm going to be getting my uh, hands together. I'm just going to bring fingertips. Some of you may be in the same position. All right, so bend your legs a lot. This time, you're standing on your right foot. You're going to be balancing on the right foot, so coming up onto the ball of the left. Breathe. Take your time for balance. Look at a spot about eight or nine feet in front of you. Wait for your own inner cue to balance. Bend the leg a lot. The right leg is bent a lot. Lift the left leg up and over. And try to tuck your toes behind your calf. This posture not only works all the joints of the major joints of the body, it increases your ability to focus, opens the third eye to become more intuitive. And come on out, sweep the arms up. Woohoo! Exhale, float the arms down. Okay, we got one more posture. <laughs> Take your legs wide apart now. Oh, we'll do wide leg forward fold, and we're going to clutch our arms behind our back uh, and do one last uh, stretch and release for the shoulders, and then we will be coming into Shavasana. So, Take your arms behind your back, interlock your fingers, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Ah. And as you squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift your heart centers up to the sky, as well as your gaze. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees, lead with your hearts, forward fold, 
Lower your torso between your legs, lifting your arms up, up. Let your head hang, please. Give your head a little swing. If you're holding anything, let go. The head won't fall off. Oh boy, breathing, lifting the arms up as high and as far as you can. Okay, release your arms. Let them fall forward. Bring them into the center of your legs. Straighten your legs now. Halfway coming up, tabletop. Exhale, let's lunge over to the left. Bringing your bum close to heel, stretching your inner thigh. And come on up to the center. Exhale, lunging to the other side. And one more time, up into the center, over to the left. And back up to the center, over to the right. Feel that stretch in the inner thigh. Back into the center, walk your feet in. Flat out and relaxing. Come on into your Shavasana. Jane, stop your grumbling. Get into it. You need it more than anybody. <laughs> My friend Jane. I think I got her a, um, uh, a coaster that said, if it wasn't for stress, I wouldn't get any exercise. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be sitting, but I want everybody else to please, unless you want to meditate after this class, come into shavasana flat out and relaxing if you need to i don't think you will today it's warmer but cover yourself up make yourself comfortable if you have something to cover your eyes if your room is really bright please cover your eyes and close them and let your eyeballs sink into their sockets so just quickly um i want to speak about uh, water but I also mentioned pain between the shoulder blades can indicate a problem in opening up emotionally, unwilling to be vulnerable. And by the way, I love what Jillian Michaels uh, said. Now that's a gal who does major workouts. She says, if you want to lose 10 pounds, just stand up straight. Uh, not only will you look slimmer, it will improve your overall uh, core and back strength. And uh, studies have found that good posture bolsters focus, mood, and confidence. Okay. So allow your body to be soft and heavy. Close your eyes. Separate the biting surfaces of your teeth. Relax your jaw. But keep your ears open for a moment. The importance of water. If you don't like drinking water, you really need to get over it and find the ways that you can imbibe water. Um, as the earth is 60 to 70% water, so are we. Same thing, it's vital to life. The only thing more vital than water is oxygen for survival. Um, as I mentioned, without enough water, uh, the kidneys cannot function properly and the kidneys and the liver uh, work together so if your kidneys aren't getting the amount of water they need to get rid of the waste and toxic substances in your body, it's an extra workload for your liver, um, whose primary functions are the metabolisms of fats, proteins, carbohydrates, bile production, enzyme activation. These things are, they've never been more important. Um, and water can help to, I know a girl who, if she has a headache, I say, Adriana, have you drunk enough water? To, no, I haven't. As soon as she drinks water, headache's gone. It can be the cause of back pain. It can contribute to chronic fatigue syndrome, um, allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, bloating, constipation. Um, and I'm just, you know, skipping. I've got a lot here. One of these days, there is going to be a whole section on my website of articles uh, so that I can give you all these things. Now, Beverages like juice, most of you know, too much sugar uh, stimulates the pancreas, produces too much insulin. Sodas, um, some of them have caffeine, the sugar, uh, the acids, not good. Um, and of course, caffeine and non-herbal teas will stimulate your adrenals and their diuretics. Now, 
I know some of you have asked me about uh, weight loss. Drinking healthy amounts of water, about six to eight ounces a day at least. So that's about three liters. If you have a pitcher, just fill it with three liters, finish it off. And it could be the most important piece of the puzzle in losing weight. Um, current research shows that low water intake increases the amount of fatty deposits and the opposite is true. More water, less fatty deposits. Um, when we're dieting, if we're restricting our food intake, we're also restricting our fluid intake. So you need to up the ante because a lot of foods contain water. Drinking a lot of water doesn't bloat or make you retain water. Not drinking a lot of water or not, dr not drinking enough causes the body to actually go into a primal survival mode. So stop depriving your body of water. Start delivering and enlivening it with something that it desperately needs and the only thing it needs more than is oxygen but you know what it probably needs what we need the most of and drinking a lot of water is a way we do is loving your body and by coming out to a yoga class practicing keeping some of what you learn in each class somewhere in your field of awareness throughout today will help to solidify the ideals and the goals of taking care of your most valuable possession. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to share this information and this 5,000-year-old science of yoga with you. Have a beautiful day. Yeah.